God is good. My name is Sister Nema. God is good all the time. My name is Sister Patricia, missionary servants of the Word. Today we are here once more to continue with the history of salvation. God loves human beings, of which, before we begin, we will flash back about the previous topic whereby it was all about Jesus loves us to the limit. And we did the supplementary notes about the Eucharist and its institution, whereby we saw that Jesus Christ gave us his own body and blood for the sake of our salvation, full of love for us as human beings, the same way we are needed to express the same love towards him and others. For today, we will have the topic about the people of God. Before we begin, we will begin with a word of prayer from the book of Psalms, chapter 111. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the assembled congregation of the upright. Majestic and glorious is your work. Your wise design endures forever. You only known for your wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. Glory be to the Father, Father and to His Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let's continue with our today's topic, the people of God whereby the first text is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 14. All these devoted themselves with one according to prayer, together with some women, and made the mass of Jesus and his brothers the word of God. Thanks be to God. My dear listener, we can see the apostles were gathered together with Mary and other women, whereby in their gathering was for ten days, and they were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Whereby, <clears throat> in this time, as they were gathered in prayer, we can see when the day of the Pentecost came, Suddenly, a noise like a strong driving wind from the sky, it filled the entire room in which they were gathered. Then tongues of fire appeared to them, which spread out and came to rest on each of them. With this, before we continue seeing how they got filled with the Holy Spirit, let us listen from the heart of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. When the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues the word of God. Thanks be to God. My dear listener, we can see that all of them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And this presence of the Holy Spirit is also necessary for us as Christians in order to be ready to bear testimony of God's message in our daily life for the sake of salvation. So we will continue listening from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Now there were devoted Jews from every nation, and a heaven stayed in Jerusalem. They were astounded, and in amazing they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking in Galilee? Then how does each of us hear them in his own native language? Both Jews and convert to Judaism, 
Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues. The word of God. Thanks be to God. My dear listener, in those days, people who had come from every nation were staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd to see what was happening. But they were confused by each one whom they had speaking in one language. And to understand about all that had happened, we can see that Peter is giving a clarification about the coming of the Holy Spirit or else what was happening with the Apostles. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 12 to 21, and verse 36 to 41. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, lays his voice, and proclaimed to them, You who are his lights, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarian was a man commanded to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst. As you yourself know, this man delivered up by the said plan and foreknowledge. Therefore, let the whole house of Israel know for some time that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about three thousand persons were added that day. The word of God. My dear listener, after they had the confusion of hearing them speaking in their own language, we can see Peter stood up and explained that the Holy Spirit, according to Prophet Joel, had descended upon them. But in order to be saved, they needed to repent and be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the forgiveness of their sins. As we can also see, the Spirit encourages them to have a change of life, conversion, and to be baptized so that they may enter to participate and enjoy their communal life. And so we will continue listening from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 34 to 46. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality, rather in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, these things the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also. The word of God. Thanks be to God. As we have heard is that that day while Peter was preaching, 3,000 men accepted Peter's invitation, and they were baptized. The Holy Spirit continued to be the soul of the preachings of the apostles, whereby they had to proclaim the message of Christ everywhere with great success. And then one day, Peter was preaching to the group of Gentiles in the house of the centurion, whereby the Holy Spirit came down upon those who were listening and began also to speak 
in different languages, of which in their speeches they were glorifying or else celebrating the greatness of the Lord. My dear listener also has, we are invited to do the same. Despite we, ha we have our own languages, is to use them to speak in order to proclaim the greatness of the Lord in our lives and the lives of others. Again, we can see from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42 to 45. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Are we came upon everyone and made wonders in science were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. The word of God. Thanks be to God. The presence of the Holy Spirit among the apostles and the Christians who were there, we can see, filled them with love and humility together with courage, so that they were able to serve each other to a point of sharing everything that they had. And then, my dear listener, in this book of the Acts of Apostle, the invitation is that we should be ready there to express the presence of the Spirit in us, enabling us to be there to give our lives for the sake of others, share what we have. But we can question ourselves. Do we really give our lives for the sake of others or not? Because by doing so, we affirm our love to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's continue by listening from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 46 to 47. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and to break bread in their homes. Praising God and, and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of God. Thanks be to God. My dear listener, as we have heard, is that out of the testimony of the life they had given, their number of Christians increased every day out of their preaching. They are sharing together celebration of the Eucharistic bread. And so for us as Christians, we are invited also to live the same, bearing testimony of Christian ways, living in friendship and sharing everything we have in order to give testimony in daily life whereby we can see also in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 1 to 16. Now so still breathing, murderers, threatening again the disciples of the Lord, went to the higher priest and asked him for a letter to the synagogues in Damascus. If we should find any man or woman who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey as he was nearing Damascus, light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, So, so, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And here he has authority from the chief priest to imprison all who call upon your name. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. The word of God. Thanks be to God. My dear listener out there, we saw that they were sharing everything in common. 
and that was a good testimony for Christian life of which is needed in our small Christian communities, in our families, and so forth. In those times, the number of Christians increased, despite that there were persecutions. Especially among the persecutors of Christians in those times was Saul of Tarsus. And we have heard that one day, while he was hiding, or he was heading to Damascus, accompanied by his men in pursuit of Christians living there, a light surrounded him and made him fall from the horse. Then he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And maybe the same words are said to us as Christians today. Why do we persecute Christ in our daily life? Maybe in our actions, thoughts, and so forth. After that, we can see Saul himself converted his life through one person called Ananias, of which God or else Jesus Christ used him in order to help Saul to change his life, or else to convert his life. Whereby the teaching is that after that happened with Saul, later he converted, his name changed to Paul, and out of love, he was meant to be a preacher of the message of his salvation. That is why we can sing, after converting himself, he went and met different or else numerous communities around the empire and was able to help many people. It's an invitation for us, my dear listener, that also we may change in our lives and begin to do good things enabling others also to follow our Lord Jesus Christ, despite maybe at the beginning we may be bad people, doing bad to the Christians. Always there is an opportunity to change life, and God may use another person to help you or me to change life. The other readings, the first one is from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, verse 1 to 44, and chapter 28, verse 1, to that one. Whereby we can see after a long and dangerous trip he arrived in Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire. Peter and Paul founded an excellent religious community there. In regardless of the terrible persecutions they had to pass through. The number of the Christians grew up more and more. Then we can see, during the persecution of Nero in the year 67, Peter was martyred on the cross. And then Paul was decapitated. Then, later we had St. Linus, who also died a martyr who was the successor of Peter, the first pope. The blood of the martyrs in a, our Christian life is a seed for new Christians. Whereby, in that time, all those martyrs at the beginning was just a short period of time, but in that short period of time, they showed a spirit of giving testimony of humility, charity, and courage. The same way we as Christians, we should emulate and do the same in our daily life. Of which, the, all this entails the spirit of the Lord and his grace in our lives. Above all, my dear listener, we are invited to do a little bit homework of four questions. Whereby the first one is, what requirement did St. Peter demand from those who listened to his first sermon in order to receive baptism? The second one, who received the Holy Spirit in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? The third one, rewrite the prophecy of Joel, which St. Peter used during his speech on the day of Pentecost, 
and is still valid today. Would you like to follow the example of the apostles who filled with the Holy Spirit went to preach the gospel to distant lands? Maybe you may ask me, how can I go to preach the gospel to distant lands? But we ourselves, through our baptism, we were made preachers, prophets, and kings. Whatever we are, out of our testimony, out of our daily way of life, my dear listener, we can be there to preach the gospel in one way or the other. My name once more is Sister Patricia, missionary servants of the world. Have a nice day. And my name is Sister Nema. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Radio Waumini, 88.3 FM.